When working with control units, you will encounter a number of terms. Software development, programming, coding, configuration. This chapter explains what each of them mean. However, do not be surprised to find these terms used incorrectly in the literature from time to time. Software development is the development of a program for a control unit. This activity is often referred to as programming. However, writing the program for the microprocessor is only a small part of it. It is at least as important to provide the necessary initial data, which is identified in many simulations and tests. Together, they form the software of the control unit. Creating the software is the job of the control unit developer. The software is provided for production. Sometimes, the control units are supplied complete with software before production starts. Other times, the software is loaded to the control unit at the end of the production line. However, the software is provided to workshops, in order to carry out repairs, for example. Configuration, or coding, means altering the initial data for the control unit. This might be necessary when the functions of the control unit need to be adapted to the customer's wishes. For example, the daytime driving lights function is stored in the control unit. From this moment on, the daytime driving lights are switched on as soon as the engine is started. Another case is when the vehicle is modified. If, for example, an auxiliary heater is fitted in the vehicle, this must be made known, amongst others, to the air conditioning control unit. The control unit then uses the initial data for this vehicle configuration. The configuration, or coding, is then carried out by the workshop mechanic using the diagnostic system. The same control unit hardware is used in different vehicle models and series. Only when the software is installed is it tailored to the vehicle in question. Transferring the entire program data and initial data to the control unit is called programming. Programming takes place in several situations. During manufacturing, the control unit software is loaded at the end of the production line. During workshop repairs too, only blank replacement control units are available. Therefore, the workshop mechanic has to program the control unit after installing it. Sometimes functions of the control unit are modified to increase customer satisfaction. An example of this might be altering the shifting characteristics of an automatic transmission. In both these last two cases, the workshop mechanic does the job using the diagnostic system. What type of storage module does the data go into during programming? Programming is only possible if the program and initial data are stored in a flash memory. That's why programming is also known as flashing. Control units which contain the program and initial data in the ROM cannot be programmed because the content of the ROM cannot be changed. Although it would be possible to store the data in the RAM, it would be useless since the data would be lost as soon as the power is switched off. To prevent tampering, many coding and programming procedures have to be protected using a secure code. The standardized coding method, called SCN code, is used. SCN stands for Software Calibration Number. You must request the SCN code from the manufacturer, stating the modification you've made and the vehicle identification number. The manufacturer calculates the code and sends it to the workshop, where it is stored in the vehicle control unit using the diagnostic system. Only then does the modification come into effect. The manufacturer must be notified so that all modifications can be centrally recorded. Programming must be carried out strictly in order, as otherwise there is a risk of rendering the control unit inoperable. 
The basic sequence is as follows. Consult the workshop literature in each individual case. First of all, the new software must be available for programming. It is supplied either on a CD-ROM or online by the manufacturer. Before actual programming starts, the diagnostic system is connected to the vehicle. The control unit is put into a state where it can be programmed. In other words, where its program and initial data can be replaced with new data. This can be done by accessing the control unit using the diagnostic system. However, certain manual operations on the vehicle may be necessary. In any case, the vehicle's ignition must be switched on. Make sure the battery is sufficiently charged to maintain the vehicle's power supply throughout the process. Sometimes the program and data memory is deleted in a separate step. The new software is transferred to the control unit. Depending on the size of the software, this can take some time. Warning! The programming procedure must never be interrupted. What do you think would happen in this case? In this case, the control unit would contain neither the old nor the new software. On older control units, it is impossible to resume the programming procedure. Modern control units have a backup of the existing software, so that permanent failure is prevented. After the data is transferred, the control unit is reset, for example by briefly switching off the ignition. After flashing, parameters may have to be set. Custom configurations, which you previously noted down, must be restored. You may also have to perform a teaching process to restore adaptive values. For example, after programming the transmission control unit, you need to engage all gears or lever positions in turn to calibrate the path sensors. If the flash memory was deleted before programming, it cannot contain any more program data. The software for the programming procedure is stored in the ROM. Now that nearly all the software is stored in flash memories these days, the ROM only has one function, booting up the control unit after the ignition is switched on and transferring software to the flash memory. This means the memory module can be quite small.